Okay, boys and girls, we're back again. And today we're going to talk about um, the onboard charger. Lots of people have been interested in that. And so we're going we're to take a, a little um, high-level tour through how this thing works and, um, and what it could do if, um, if Tesla decided to. So let's start off with, uh, with something that you may have seen. So you're driving down the expressway or down a, down a highway or something. And uh, there's a guy, and he's got his right hand out, and in his left hand, he's got a gas can. And you know that this guy's a dummy. He kind of uh, ran out of gas. So you have compassion on him, and you pick him up, take him to a gas station, and if you're a real nice guy, you'll drive him back. But what happens when, what happens when you've got an EV that's dead in the water? Now, now what do you do? I mean, you can just drive by a guy at the side of the road and he's going, help me. There's nothing you can really do for him currently. So that's scenario number one. And then let's talk about scenario number two. You got your solar panels up and you got all this stuff going on and, uh, and then you get into a great big giant storm. Okay, and your solar panels aren't working real well <laughs> in, the, um, in, in the rain. The, uh, the battery is running low, but you've got your car sitting right outside. That thing's been sucking power for a long time. Why can't it give back, right? Why can't it do that? So we've got the two scenarios. The guy sitting on the side of the road, dead, because he doesn't have any more juice left in his battery, and your house, which unfortunately right now is dead. So what are we gonna do, or how could we make things happen so that you could uh, charge a buddy or uh, charge your house um, and, and make it so that you know, we can get through the day or get through an, a, a little bit of a disaster without any problems. So today we're gonna talk about the onboard charger. And so this is what an onboard charger looks like. And basically you're looking at the back half of the, uh, of the charger and there's uh, two, sorry, three great big things in the center that are white and basically yellow. And uh, those are called transformers. And then over here, we've got diodes. Now, okay, that means probably zip to most people. So we're gonna explain a little bit, not a whole lot, but a little bit more on what's going on and how this actually works. So let's have a look here. So what I showed you was just this lower board, but there's an upper board as well. And, and this is the one where the power comes in from the grid. So this is running in at 220. So what your, what your stove would run at if you have an electric stove. Through this uh, myriad of, uh, of electronic stuff, um, you get over to the transformers. And the transformers, their job is to uh, basically accept the power and, um, and in conjunction with these uh, diodes over here, they're gonna change the power from AC on this side to DC on that side. Now, the one thing that you have to know about the diodes is that these are little one-way valves they only go one way. So power can go in here and out there, or power can come in here and out there, but they can't go backwards. It's just, it's like a brick wall. So if you, uh, if you know anything about plumbing, some of you might know that your sump pump has a little one-way valve on it. It's got a little ball, and when the water in your sump pump wants to get out, the ball gets raised, the water goes out, and as soon as the water's gone, boom, the ball valve falls right back down, and it, locks the, uh, it seals that, that pipe from having water come back in. Water and electricity is kind of like the same. So let's have a quick look here at, um, at uh, how, this, uh, how this works or how this looks on the circuit board before we get to the detail. So now you can see that these are broken up into three distinct channels. You can see that we've got three transformers, and you can see that these are sectioned as well. So we have, we have the uh, DC high side, and we have the DC low side. So the DC low side is for um, 12 volt batteries, 12, things that run at 12 volts, and uh, the high side is for the electric motors and things like that. So this one here basically says, the way that Tesla has it designed right now, um, you're stuck. This is only going to be a one-way trip. The, 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 the 220 comes through, it gets converted to DC for high and low uh, voltage, and then that's it. It can't go backwards. But 
But that being said, let's just have a look at what could happen. So the first step that we would need to take, or Tesla would need to take, is to go into something that, that's called a bidirectional flow, which means that power could go out and uh, make the car work, or power could come back, and then you could be like uh, maybe charging your house or helping the guy that's uh, standing on the side of the road who ran out of juice in his, uh, in his car. So these right here are transistors. The transistors that we're looking at have bi-directional flow. So that means that if I wanted to, I could take power from over here on the DC side, send it through these back into the, 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 the charging voltage, which in this case would be 220, uh, 220 AC, alternating current. And that's, that's kind of what we could do if, if Tesla wanted to uh, make that change. Now, why won't they want to do that? Well, um, first off, uh, 220 is kind of dangerous, and uh, so people might hurt themselves. Uh, secondly, uh, these transistors are, uh, are a lot more expensive than the arrangement that we've got right here right now. This, uh, this is not an OTA kind of a thing. It's just, you can't get it over the air and boop, it's done. This has to be done, um, this has to be designed. So these, even though they're electronic components, are, are basically mechanical. We have, to, we have to change the mechanics of this circuit board before we can make that happen. So these are, this is just a little quick snapshot because we've had so many people saying that they think somehow that magic can happen and, uh, and we flip a switch or we get a signal uh, over the air and, and things can happen differently. They can't, it's just not possible because of the design of the circuit boards right now. So that's one thing. And last, uh, we've been talking and talking and talking about uh, how the reports are gonna be finished soon. Well, they're done now. So um, uh, I haven't gotten the whole copy yet. It's gonna probably be about, uh, probably when you put them all together, it'd be about that high. But what we do have that I've been allowed to print and whatnot is the side-by-side -side between the Tesla Model Y and the Model 3. And uh, <laughs> the results are shocking. Um, there's a big giant difference between the cost of the Model 3 in 2017 and uh, 2018 and, uh, and this Model Y in 2020. And the cost went down significantly. So a lot of thing that people have been asking for is electronic uh, and electrical topology. So, in here, we've got, uh, we've got little shots of how it works and what it does. Things like explaining how this works, not that, but this. Um, that's, in, uh, that's in the different parts of the report. This one here happens to be the thermal systems. There's a lot of people that are interested in this simply because it's got the octo valve and things like that that are in there. And then, <clears throat> and then we've got the uh, FFQ, the Fit Finish Quality Assessment. And there's a vast difference between what, um, what we saw on the, um, the, uh, the Model 3 versus the Model Y. The Model Y, even though it's still not as good as I think it should be or could be, um, it's still a huge impact. There's a huge impact between the difference between the two different vehicles. So stay tuned. Um, we're uh, hopefully going to be able to make you uh, happy with some more stuff. I'm going to be talking about another in another little uh, shot here. So keep tipping those uh, cashiers. They, they need the cash and uh, they're, they're basically risking their lives for us. So let's do that and see you next time.